Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about one more or rather two interactions between these species and these are when one species is getting benefited and the other species is harmed and this kind of interaction is seen in two cases so we'll talk about these two here and then take the examples separately one is parasitism in parasitism there are two species one is the parasite and other is the host so the host is going to be harmed and the parasite is going to be benefited so one is harmed the other is benefited and the similar kind of interaction is seen that is one species species getting harmed other getting benefited in case of predation so parasitism and predation they have the similar kind of interactions again let us talk about parasitism here in parasitism there are two species one species acts as the host and the other species the second species acts as the parasite now host the first one the host that is the first one will always be harmed because the parasite is always going to take the nourishment from the host body so this is harm because the nourishment is taken from its body whatever food whatever energy it has gathered for itself some part of that energy that food will be taken by the parasite and parasite is always going to get benefited because it gets the ready-made food so it gets ready-made food from the host plant or host organism now these parasites they can be of two types depending upon where in the body of the host they are found whether they are inside the body or outside the body so if we are talking about these parasites we can categorize them as endoparasites that means they are found inside the host and ectoparasites they remain on the body of the host and keep absorbing the nourishment and let us take few examples of endoparasites endoparasites are like tapeworm a liver fluke plasmodium that is the malarial parasite so these are endoparasites they are found inside the body of the host now if we talk about tapeworm it has two hosts one host is the human that is man and the second host is pig in case of liver fluke again there are two hosts one host is man second host is snail or a fish and in case of plasmodium again there are two hosts one is man and the second is female anopheles mosquito so it is not necessary that every time there is going to be only one host in all these cases there are two hosts if we take one more example that is of ascaris ascaris commonly known as roundworm and it has only one host that is human or man so parasites can have single host or two hosts depending upon whether they are able to complete their life cycle in one host or not and these endoparasites because they have to live inside the body of the host they show some kind of adaptations so what are those adaptations seen in case of endoparasites if we take say a, any example tapeworm now it is found inside our elementary canal if it has to live there then it should have cuticle a thick layer of cuticle which would protect it from enzymes and hydrochloric acid so they have thick cuticle 
this this is important adaptation that they have now they have to suck the blood or the food and they should remain entangled somewhere fixed in our body so for which they have hooks and suckers so these are the adaptations that we are talking of now it is living inside our body it is going to take all that food which we have digested and absorbed so they don't need any digestive system they are going to take all the digested food from our body so digestive system is absent plus they don't have to have sense organs there they don't have to see anything around them they don't have to uh, uh, get stimulated by you know sound or light or anything so no sense organs they don't need it there and their main purpose is to reproduce so the reproductive system is very well developed so these are the adaptations which we see in case of tapeworm in case of liver fluke in case of plasmodium though it, the structure is not that complex but the life cycle is very complex ascaris also it has to protect itself from our uh, digestive enzymes or various chemicals which are there so they have these kind of adaptations in their body so that they are able to survive inside the body of the host now if we talk about ectoparasite we can take the example of leech we can take the example of lice ticks lice are found in, uh, on the body of animals including humans leeches normally suck the blood from the body of various kinds of animals and ticks are ectoparasites on the body of animals like dogs and all what they do is they have again they have to suck the blood or they have to obtain the nourishment so what adaptations we see in them adaptations are not going to be like the adaptation seen in case of endoparasites they are outside the host body so they have to have the sense organs and everything they don't need that cuticle because they are not going inside the body of the host so their adaptations are if they have to suck the blood say for example leech it has to have suckers so they either have suckers or they have sucking type of mouth parts and if they have to suck the blood they should be able to puncture the skin so we normally call it piercing and sucking type of mouth parts now here we will take one more important name that is the female anopheles female anopheles they suck the blood from humans and that is how they are helping in the life cycle of plasmodium so if they suck blood are they ectoparasites anopheles is not an ectoparasite it is not a parasite parasite is the one which lives in or on the body of the host and draws nourishment from here anopheles female anopheles sucks human blood because it requires certain proteins which are present in our blood for its reproduction so the blood which is taken is not its food it is required or it is taken for its reproduction then what do they feed on they feed on plant sap like the male anopheles do so male anopheles female anopheles have their food as plant sap but the female anopheles sucks our blood also because they need that blood for egg formation reproduction and the proteins of our blood are required so they need they need blood especially the proteins for egg formation or their reproduction so we cannot call them parasites they do take our blood they do suck our blood and because they have to suck the blood they have the same piercing and sucking type of mouth parts 
but this blood which is taken by them is not acting as their food. So though it is a blood sucking insect, but it is not an ectoparasite. So we can classify these parasites as endo or ecto depending upon where they are found. In case of plants also, there are some parasites like cascuta. Cascuta absorbs nourishment from the host plant. So if it has to absorb nourishment, it is it does not require leaves. So there are no leaves, its roots which are called hostoria penetrate into the host. Its roots they are called hostoria or parasitic roots, they penetrate into the host, host plant and they go up to xylem and phloem of the host plant. In xylem there is water, in phloem there is food which is conducted. So their roots go up to xylem, go up to the phloem. That means they take water from the xylem of the host plant and food from the phloem of the host plant. So they are parasites and because they don't have to synthesize the food, they don't have leaves, they don't have to absorb water from the uh, roots, uh, from the soil, so they don't have roots. So they have only the pipe like stem structure. They don't have leaves, no photosynthesis. They don't have roots because they don't have to absorb water from the soil. So food taken from the host, water taken from the host. And obviously host plants growth will be affected because all that food which was getting translocated, some part has been taken by cascuta and all that pot, uh, water which was conducted, also some part taken by cascuta. So this is definitely going to affect the growth of host, be it plant or animal, host is always going to suffer. So as our indication is minus that is harm. So harm will always be done to the host and plus that is benefit will always be to the parasite. Parasite can be endo or ecto. Every time it is the parasite which is going to get benefited. Now in the next part we will talk about predation and we will take few examples to understand this.